Well, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. Some Twilight Jacob Renesme action. Yeah. Why? Why? No, I mean in the sense where like the child, like the the couples didn't work out. I don't know why for some reason. The children are in love because the fucking sperm and the ovaries from like 20 years ago <laughs> were into each other. What? <laughs> To romancing the monsters i'm M. hi i'm s i'm seth she says that she's making a lot of noise <laughs> yeah i had to stop because my little the thing was going crazy and she's seth i i, I, I said, said i seth. talked over her okay i know but i talked over you so i just want to make sure that our listeners know that you are seth everyone knows it's me i'm here guys i'm here <laughs> or as the youtube captions love to say you're seth <laughs> i'm m yeah which just em apparently so <laughs> love that for us <laughs> <laughs> the topic of today's conversation is love in the afternoon by lisa claypass yes yes friends we've made it to book five in the hathaway series feel free to go back and listen to uh the past episodes in the series if uh this is the first one that you stumble upon um because we probably are gonna refer back to them so mm -hmm. you know in case you're lost i would recommend you go and listen to the prior ones uh seth yeah seth seth what is this book about well em -M, <laughs> this book <laughs> is about our girl beatrix she's finally got the spotlight and um it starts off with her uh, meeting with her friend who is actually exchanging letters with an officer in the uh the military right now and He's known as uh, Captain Christopher Phelan, and he actually was, um, he lived in, what is it called? Where, where the, Hampshire, right? That's sure. the area that they're in. Yeah. Anyways, but he is off to war fighting um, some battle in Crimea. Prue, which is her friend, is actually supposed to be exchanging letters with him, but she receives a letter, and it's just, in her perspective, very boring and just very dull, and she does not care to entertain him. He's literally pouring his heart out, like talking about like how sad he yep. is, how the war is so tough, emotionally draining him, blah blah blah. And she's like, "Oh my god, this is so dull. Like, I don't know. I don't want to answer." Her. I know. And then Beatrix, <laughs> being Beatrix, she's like, "Well, you can't just leave him hanging. Like, you know, you gotta." at least respond to him in some way. And so Beatrix takes the letter and she actually gets to read it. And then she experiences like a sort of pity or like she feels something like the letter is speaking like to her and she feels that it's to her. Um, and he also describes a dog that he found, Alfred, and that speaks to Beatrix's love for animals. So with Prue's permission, she's allowed to respond to Christopher, um, but under Prue's name. And so... She continues this exchange with Christopher as Prudence, and lo and behold, she falls in love with him, and he falls in love with her as well. Although he believes that he's writing to Prudence, this, uh, I guess, well, like, put together woman of the ton, and Beatrix, we know, is very much her own person, and she's unique, and she is Beatrix. And so she fears that, you know, he'd be angry and disappointed, so she decides to stop writing because the feelings got real, and she actually is in love with this man that she's written to. Well, I mean, I mean, let's just mention that she's aware that Christopher, Mr. Man, has said before... Oh, yes. That she belongs in the stables. So to Beatrix, she's like, he would never yes. accept me as I am. He thinks I'm an animal. Yeah, in his perspective, so. yeah. And anyways, he comes back, uh, a well-decorated war hero. He is back. Whoa, 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 whoa. pause, pause. What? You're forgetting something here. She wrote one last letter, oh, which oh, she yes. wasn't supposed to send, where she was kind of admitting her feelings and being like, without revealing who she was, she was like, come find me. Yes, yes. But she had meant to send, like, a very, like, impersonal message. Yeah. 
mistakenly sent the wrong one. And, yeah. uh, yeah, he comes back, a well-decorated war hero, and his first mission is to find Prudence and marry her. And things don't go according to plan, and he starts realizing the Prudence from the letters might not be the Prudence that he sees in person. And maybe the person writing the letters was someone different. How was Beatrix ever that woman's friend? Right? I don't see it. I can't see it. That is my question. Do you think she just, like, was her friend because she felt like she had to be her friend to fit in? Or I don't know. Here's the thought. What if Prudence was not always this bad, but she got tainted, unfortunately, by the marriage market and made into this? Yeah. Because that's just what it garners, like, you know. Okay. I can see that. Because I can't really see a gentle kind, generous soul like Beatrix having anything to do with someone like Prudence. You would literally just use her, you know? Like Were they childhood friends, though? I don't know. Or were they just recent new friends? No, I don't don't think they were childhood friends. I feel like maybe they could have grown to be friends because they all lived in Hampshire, so maybe, like, they're the same age group, so maybe it was expected for them to be friends, and maybe Mm. they were in a way. Well... Nonetheless, uh, what did you guys think of this book? I'm most nervous about S's uh, reaction. Well, I mean, you know part of it. I don't. Because, okay, here's an insight. Uh, We were talking. I don't remember what we were talking about last week, but we had a chat. And S said something to Seth that I didn't hear about how she was feeling about this book. I didn't want to hear, so... But who was the one that asked? I, I felt like you were the one that asked, didn't you? I think I was asking, like, has your, like, has it changed? Like, are you enjoying it a bit more? Because, okay, let's be, okay. So in the chat, like, our, like, our group chat that we have, um, S was talking about how I don't think she was liking it. She used emo- emojis that I wasn't too sure if she was liking it or not liking it. And then we asked her last episode, <laughs> Married by Morning, um, and yeah, her opinions I don't know like I just I'm I'm distressed I want to know what you what you think I just I just want to know no okay so I didn't I enjoyed it very much I really love Beatrix and Christopher it's just the beginning part the aspect of like the letters and then the war epistolary romance is not your thing it's it's not Oh, yeah. interesting! I did not know that. So it was just that, just the the back and forth of the letters, and then just mm. it kind of took place with him in war. He was away, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's just mm. it's not my thing. See, that's what I was more worried about. He's a soldier, yeah. which you're not into men in uniform yeah. type of thing. So I was like, oh, I don't know how she'll feel, but it's not like modern day type of mm-hmm. stuff. So maybe she'll feel different about that. Yeah, no no so that part of that section of the beginning of the story is just it it wasn't doing it for me okay interesting but other than that but i i love them though so i'll say that from chapter 15 and like up was like amazing (laughs) 15 i mean there's like 30 something well that's like 50 percent of the book though is it it doesn't last that long it lasts like maybe what 25 percent of the book and then they're reunited well we'll say Chapter 14, because he comes back. I think it's like four chapters, guys. No, that's definitely not it. What? She said he comes back on chapter four. I'm like, no. No, I don't think so. (laughs) Maybe chapter 10? Uh, (laughs) Can we bargain it down to chapter 10? (laughs) No, chapter 15, because that's where I was like hooked. Okay, okay, fine. That's when you were hooked. Okay, so then let's focus on the part that you did, like, tell us everything. So... So the scene that got me was them in the stables. I think it was the stables where they go and meet uh-huh. Hector. Oh, was yeah. It the, yeah. So um, just the fact that he grabbed her and like pushed her up against the stalls and then just him mm-hmm. wanting he to was. find out if she was the one behind the letters and stuff. No, he was a uh, very, very. Uh, he liked pushing her against walls, you know, yeah. and I, I love that mm. for him. and I love that for her as well. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Same, same. Uh, what about you, Seth? I mean, this was easily one of my favorite books in the series. Like, I love this one. I love Beatrix. I think her character is just such a unique person. And I think Christopher really complimented her really well. And, like, his character was so, like, he was so different than all the other men that Lisa Claypass has written. Just because, like you said, he's a military man. But also, like, I feel like 
he had a different sense of like urgency and like his own monsters are very different than all the other males mm, that we've experienced mm-hmm. um and at least the clay pass book so i really enjoyed seeing a different side of her writing but yeah i loved their story their romance is really cute i for one like uh you know letters in a romance i think it's really cute dear john not dear john what is it called shit What's it called? Uh, Dear, Dear Aaron. Dear, Aaron. D- yeah, Aaron. D- Dear Aaron by Mariana Zapata. I love that book. Um, Which is also a soldier book, interestingly enough. Yeah. That, I mean, I was going to say, is that a trope? Like, just soldiers writing letters, but then, like, it clicked in my brain that, like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense in that, in that case. <laughs> kind, of, kind of makes sense. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I love this book. Sam, I love this book. I always have. Christopher... Beatrix I don't know there's something about them that just gets me yeah probably because she's like a little childish but like in a great way that like actually helps him uh find some of that light and uh lightness in himself Mm -hmm. that he's he doesn't have so I think like it's obvious here how they actually need each other in that way I mean, don't get me wrong. It's hot to have this man be like, okay, Beatrix, love you for how you are, but I'm going to, you know, write a few things in your life and, like, you know, take control of a few things. <laughs> I was into it. Um, but, like you, really love an epistolary romance. Uh, I j- especially here, because I actually feel like it was needed in a, in a way, because, like, yeah. I... Every book needed to be a little different from the others. So the fact that this romance between them starts, you know, on a lie and through letters and then he doesn't know, but she knows the truth. Mm -hmm. And for him to come back and for them to have to like, you know, they fell in love through the letters, but then they actually have to uh relearn all of that and like fall back in love with each other as they are you know yeah. and not through the sly so I, I i adore this book i also adore albert with all my heart oh albert i said alfred yeah love him love him love him love the all the animals obviously medusa medusa love yes her. uh the ferret was pfft, gone for most of the book like where was he well because Catherine adopted the child i mean the animal probably that's probably where he is um but yeah but no going back to your comment about um how it had to happen in the sense where you know the letters were the beginning of the story of their story and then they had to relearn each other and refall in love my question to you girls do you think they would have fallen in love if it wasn't for the letters. Like, if they'd met at a ballroom or something, do you think that they would have had that connection? He probably would have been too pretentious to see that in her. But also, the question is, are we talking about him after what happened to him? And, you know, the trials, uh, emotional and and physical of, of war, or him before the war? Because he himself says that he's changed a lot. You know, he was... A jackass before mm-hmm. he was an asshole he was pretentious and you know uh you know chasing skirts and you know he's not that person anymore so him before the war no him after maybe he would have been too closed off to even allow himself to meet someone else mm-hmm. and you know invite someone else into his life so maybe no maybe they needed that maybe they needed the letters to act as like a in between for them to you know speak their their speak their truth (laughs) (laughs) be their authentic selves you know yeah what about you s what did you think yeah no i agree i agree with with marge everything she said so like if you had the option to keep the letters in you actually would despite you not liking yeah because i don't see it how it would work out unless Mm -hmm. animals were involved some type of connection Mm. with like the dog and Mm. well that's where it started even through the letters Mm. what you know first connected them was you know her giving advice about albert and then giving advice or uh, reporting on the the what was it the pony or whatever that was the the mule Mm -hmm. the mule 
Um, so, you know, it did kind of start with yeah. animals and it, it continued, you know, that's kind of what links them. It's, it's kind of tragic, actually, because, you know, like, we are obviously modern raisers rating this and being like, obviously, this man has PTSD mm-hmm. and obviously this dog has PTSD and like, they're both dealing with the trauma yeah. of what happened to them and and they don't know how to deal with it because it just wasn't known no. back then like it wasn't something that was really discovered and like to think i mean obviously people were starting to wonder because you know world wars were happening and it was like well or i mean guess not world wars but wars were happening that were leaving you know men psychologically scarred mm-hmm. So I'm guessing they were probably, like, wondering why are these men reacting to, you know, loud noises and, you know, not going back to life as, you know, we would assume they would or whatever. Um, But it's kind of tragic because it's, it's still mostly unknown. And so... They probably just thought they were crazy, you know, which I I guess Christopher, he did, you know, he believed that he had gone insane, that he was, you know, gonna murder someone in his sleep and whatever, you know, he sees himself as a danger, not as just someone who's dealing with trauma. Yeah. Albert was just such a, a good, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Emotional support? Companion? Addition. I'm looking for addition. Oh. Oh. Uh, (laughs) Well, he was all of those things. He was all of it, <laughs> yes, and the best, best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, he was a good addition to the story because of how he mirrored yeah. Christopher and how he was unable to vocalize, you know, what he's going through. Like, Christopher wasn't able to vocalize what he was going through. And I love that Beatrix, being Beatrix, like, knew how to handle them both in a way that, like, made them still feel like, you know, they are they have their own like autonomy and like they're their own person and I don't know I just I I think Albert was just such a great addition to the story it was like she knew that Albert was her way to communicate certain things to Christopher if that makes sense but she never did it with the intent to be with Christopher or to reach Christopher in that way which I like I don't know I just I Beatrix's character was just so great like she just honestly did it because she saw a dog suffering and she's like I can help this dog love her what scene should we go back to and start with? Do you have any in mind that, you know... I just need to talk about the scene that we keep kind of, like, talking about but not talking about. Okay, which is? Okay, the scene that I was thinking of that I thought you were thinking of, but I don't think it's the same scene. Was the I scene... think we were talking about... We were thinking of the same scene. I just didn't remember that it was... It lasted... So long. That long. Like, I think my brain kind of mushed all of that together. Oh. I was Set talking the about the scene where um, Beatrix was readying herself for the first time for sex, and she literally was like, I saw squirrels Flops having over. sex, so this is how I'm going to do it. And he was, like, dying of laughter. That scene is literally my favorite scene in this book. Loved it. Yeah. I <laughs> love that scene. Funny. She's so confident. She's, like, he's literally, like, threatening her. He's, like... Well, if you don't tell me the truth, I'll get it out of you, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'll have my way with you. Like, he's acting like he's, you know, such a villain, blah, blah, blah. And I just love that Beatrix is like, okay, fine then. Have your way with me. And she flops over onto her stomach. (laughs) And he's like, what are you doing? (laughs) She's like, well, have your way with me. Isn't that how it's done? I've, like, observed squirrels. I know how it's done. (laughs) Right? Like, I've read about a hundred species, like, uh, the, the reproduction of a hundred species. I know how it's done, except, uh, what was it? Like, slime or whatever the fuck it was. Like, some kind of insect that was like, except them. It's on their mouth. No, it's snails, <laughs> I think it was. And it's something snails. about the name. Oh, That's my gosh. Except snails. They don't do it uh, doggy style. Yeah, and I just love that he was, like, in a dark spot at that moment. But, like, just the moment, like, just her and, like, just the way she is was able, like, he was able to pull himself out of it and, like... And laugh. I know. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, he was laughing at her at that moment. But mm-hmm. it was just, it was such a sweet moment for them. Yeah, but then she says something. Yes. That he recognizes 
as something that was written in the letters because at this point, uh, you know, she is still denying that she was the one who wrote the letters. Like, obviously, he at this point knows that it wasn't Prudence. Yeah. And he's like, who the fuck did it? So he asks Be- Beatrix and she's still denying it. Uh, but then learns about the mule because, like, he, and he recognizes that as something that was in the letters, but she's still pretending that that was not, that was just, like, you know, coincidence type of thing. Yeah, she was like, how Prudence told me about the name, and so that's why I named the the mule this. Yeah, and she hears about the fact that, like, uh, Christopher has, you know, closed himself off in a room, and he's drinking himself to death, and he's just being really depressed. Yeah. So she goes to see him, and that's how we, you know, get the whole, like, flipping on the stomach scene. And then she says something that he definitely recognizes as something that was in the letters. And he's like, oh, wait a fucking minute. And Beatrix is like, and that. <laughs> <laughs> and she literally bolted. And this man's like, she uh, bolts. what are you doing? And then he had to, like, yeah, chase after her. So she runs running for her to um, a house on the property, on the land, whatever. It's a, one of the uh, Hathaway. No, no, no. It was, um. It was uh, on West Coast property. One of his? Oh, okay. Well, I guess these people just have fucking houses lying around, <laughs> like, you know, as one does. Um, So she runs to one of them, and she's like, okay, fine, like... It wasn't just a, a house. It was the her safe spot that she always went to. And right. And he knew of it right. from the letters. Right. I just love that she was like, okay, I should be good for a couple hours. And then, of course, Albert, he's like... <laughs> 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 comes in, tail wagging. He's like, hello. <laughs> and he led Christopher right to her. And um, anyways, uh, that was the scene that I was remembering. Okay, okay. But following, you know, the flipping on the stomach, like in my memory, that happened at in the, the same house. time. Okay, okay. Yeah, at the same time in the same scene, which I guess it kind of does. It's like one scene that folds into mm-hmm. the next, so it's kind of one scene. Uh, but I love that scene. I love... It's one of those moments... I don't know why it's one of those moments that just sticks with you and you still remember it. It really sticks with you, yeah. I mean, I read this book... The only time I've ever read this book was back in 2013. And I still, to this day, in 2021... I I was still like, oh yeah, the scene where she thinks like that's how sex is done. <laughs> so, you know, that tells you something. How did you feel, ass, about that? The whole... The whole that whole thing when it all went down. I thought it was funny. I thought it was cute. She, she was clueless. And then at age 20, because she's 23, right? At age 23, yeah. I figured she would have at least some type of understanding besides oh, no. the whole animals. Just based just based <laughs> on the her family, who her sisters and her brother are. I mean, she's very wise. And obviously, she has definitely not been sheltered as much as you know other ladies Mm -hmm. of her age have been just i mean she's literally like surrounded by disgustingly in love people Mm -hmm. all day so like who are who are probably like pawing at at each other and like caressing each other and kissing each other all day long so Mm -hmm. she she probably has seen quite a you know few more than you know others but it's funny to me that she's still like a little innocent yeah or she's like, she just decided that she knew this this for a fact. And she was like, yeah, no, this is how it's done. Maybe of that's course. what it was. She like honestly felt like she knew it to a T. She knew what happened she, because she's observed it so many times. So maybe she just didn't need to know more. Uh huh. But there was no... I love that about Beatrix. Like, she's got... She's free in a way. Yeah. You know? Like, she's... she. There was no... She wasn't nervous about the act. You know, in a way that a lot of other women in these books, even the ones that are like, yeah, I really want to have sex. And they they still get nervous when it comes down to it. And for her, it was just like, no, I want this. I'm fine here. Well, I mean, obviously, he made her fucking wait a lot of fucking time. I love that aspect <laughs> but... of it, though, that he waited or wanted to wait. Yeah. He yeah. waited as long as he could. Yeah, because I really, I, I swear I could remember it happening in that house, you know? Earlier. Yeah, I honestly too. thought it happened there, but no, they literally just dry hummed and, mm-hmm. you know, that was it. And great for them, but yeah, I thought it happened earlier. What if it did? <gasps> no, I have the, the 
edition. Are you sure? I don't believe nothing no more. <laughs> yes, it was literally, this is when I was discovering Lisa Clay Pass and like the Hathaway series and then my mom's like, oh, I have a few in the basement. And I go in the basement and of course that was one of them that was there. Okay. Because so. I, I too could have sworn that they have sex in that house, but I guess not. <laughs> no, 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 no. We weren't bamboozled here. Anyway, I still have a bone to pick with the publisher. I but... do as well. But going back to, like, Beatrix being free, do you think it was because her family never really, like, put limitations on her? Like, even Cam was like, you know, Beatrix is Beatrix. You can't hold her down, you know? And, like, they let her wear, like, pants. They let her do whatever she wanted. And, like, I don't know. Do you think her freeness extended to also sex? What What do you mean? Like, what do you mean it extended to sex? Like, the freedom that she got in her everyday life with, like, Cam and, like, Amelia letting her be who she is. Like, do you think that allowed her to not be like be like, afraid, be sh- like, like feel shame or like you know feel certain? Shame, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. There's no shame to it. Mm-hmm. There's no like, oh, here's what I should do, or maybe I shouldn't react this way, or enjoy this, mm-hmm. or do that, or yeah. She was kind of just like, ha- she's just a happy person, which says a lot about yeah, the fact that she has lived probably the best life possible in mm-hmm. you know this kind of situation and time period for women like she was given as many liberties as possible and look what it did it created you know a woman that's very well balanced Mm -hmm. emotionally and like yeah you know she's got dreams of her own and she's very driven and very generous and kind and you know yeah and also like it's also not you know stop talking about like the fact that her parents did die too like she experienced like the loss of her parents she experienced everything that her other sisters experienced but like because she was surrounded by love exactly she was yeah surrounded by love like from the get-go I feel like yeah probably I mean not probably definitely more so than anyone else in that family Mm -hmm. except maybe uh Poppy who I mean also I feel like that's something that we discussed in that book how Poppy was probably like you know she lived a comfortable happy yeah. life because her siblings took on a lot of the responsibility and a lot of you know the emotional uh burden yeah. of mm-hmm. what happened so she was Agreed. free to just be herself and you know that has an impact on on someone's personality yeah she doesn't have the baggage that the others have and the same applies to Beatrix here like she's just free to be whoever the fuck she wants to be exactly because her family is so loving and so like open and free whereas like on the flip side Christopher did not have at all the same upbringing that she did his mom literally did not like him she loved her son and she made that very vocal she loved her eldest son the most and once he died Christopher had no purpose and even his own grandfather really kind of, like, disregarded him. And he really didn't have that, like, love that Beatrix had. I mean, the grandfather, yeah, more or less. Like, he was, he had a couple scenes. He was very great with Beatrix. Or I guess Beatrix was great with him. He, well, because Beatrix is Beatrix. And, like, she's known for being able to talk to men. But isn't it sad how, for Christopher, it's, like, expected that he's not important in his family and also i mean he's the second son but like not only is he not important but like he's not even phased by the fact that his mom would have mm-hmm. rather see him die than his brother you know like to him it's not even like you know it'd be one thing if it was like oh he's actually heartbroken by the fact but to me the fact that he's not heartbroken and just thinks that as like a fact that he expects yeah. is like even more heartbreaking mm-hmm. because it's like wow, that's, like, ingrained into his psyche. Like, he's not wanted or needed or important or loved. Like, why? I don't, why? I don't know, S. How did that make you feel, though? Like, reading about his own upbringing and, like, how he was not really welcomed in his own house when he came back from war. No, it was sad. It was heartbreaking. Um, And I expected the mom to kind of, like, when they got together and they were going to move into the house, like, I expected her to be kind of get in the way of that but she didn't she was just like oh, okay you're gonna get married i'm just gonna go i don't know where she went to go live after yeah like i, I don't know like she was just kind of like okay with them together so i i kind of expected that she was gonna be trouble for them 
But it's mm. just like she didn't care. I mean, she literally does not give a fuck. Yeah. She doesn't. Not one ounce of it. I guess in a, in a weird way, you could say that like if at least she had been petty about it and being like getting involved, there would have been like some form mm-hmm. of, of twisted ass love care, or like yeah. you know care because she's like no this person's not good enough or whatnot but no 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 it's literally like dismissed Mm -hmm. like i don't care you do whatever you want like my son my only son is dead and i could not care less what you do and i think it's also um (laughs) referred to christopher resembling his father a lot like his father cheated on her numerous times they look alike as well and we know christopher in the past was very promiscuous and even leo was like "Uh uh-uh beatrix is not marrying him because i know all of his past she didn't even try to get to know her son after he came back though that's the problem and i feel like she's obviously suffering from like deep depression with losing her child um yeah but i don't know it doesn't excuse her behavior I also love the scene where, um, because obviously Leo at first is, like, against it, and, like, Christopher is there, like, telling them, like, I guess we'll we'll get married, whatever, and, like, Leo is against it, and Christopher is like, no, yeah, I'm against it, too. Okay, that's a good scene. <laughs> I, I love that scene. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I don't want this either. Like, I'm only here because, like, I feel like I have to, but, like, this is a bad idea. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I know that scene was so good and I love how Leo was like sitting there like his legs sprawled and he's like Cam give him a Romany saying let's go and then Cam was not doing it until the very end and he's like see I told you you're gonna give one (laughs) or better yet when Kev finally comes back and like you expect Kev to like you know you're like "Uh uh-oh Kev just learned (laughs) that Beatrix is getting married trouble's gonna be you know happening here and then instead, Christopher is like, I'm willing to take Medusa. And right away, Kev is like, y'all are getting married. Bye. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't just Medusa. It was all the animals. And Kev's all like, you know animals. what? Yeah. yeah you right. know what? I approve. Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Speaking of like Christopher with the uh, Hathaways. Yeah. How did you guys feel about like the way he was like embedded in the Hathaways and like how he came to like them and change his perspective? Because he was that person in the ton. Who was kind of like the Hathaways were like crazy and like they were odd and like you need to avoid them. But then like even like when he came back from war, he still thought that. And then like as he slowly got to know them, he his pers- like perspective changed a lot. Obviously. <laughs> well, good thing that it changed a lot because he was a little asshole before. Yeah. Right. Being all uh, judging everybody and proof that people can change. Yeah, and it also proves that like. Just because, like, it's easy to judge people, it doesn't mean that it's not easy to change your perspective because he did change it quickly and, like, he did regard them as, like, a family in the end. Plus, if anything, you know, he was being his pretentious self before and was he really loved or cared for? No. So So to to have him here be actually, like, someone who is struggling with, you know, deep stuff. Yeah. And to be taken in by this family. And, like, he tells them, like, outright, like, I could kill her in her sleep yeah. or in my sleep. Like, I am, I am danger. I am a danger to her. Mm-hmm. And their reaction is not to say, you're crazy. Get away from here. No. We don't want nothing to do with you. Instead, their reaction is to be like, it, you know, it's possible that it will, you know, go away with time that you know time will heal this wound and blah 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 kev went through the same thing one of our own and you know he it's getting easier for i know him. like that scene was so great because he i feel like for him he finally felt seen and like understood yeah. by people cared for yes, like cared someone for. out there was actually caring about him or invested in him getting better even when he wasn't willing to invest in that. I know. Thought, you know? So, oh, I just love the Hathaways, honestly. It's just, like, they would take in literally anyone. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like they're such a... They're so unrealistic of a family, but I just love I them. Know. Like, they're so welcoming, and I just... I wish I could meet them. I know. Yeah. I know. I wish I could just marry Leo. But, you know. <laughs> And me and Kev. He was, he was, he, he, in this book, 
I don't know. There was something extra extra for me. Like, I don't know if it's the fact that he's a daddy now. Oh, right. Yes. That makes him, like, hotter to me. And he's got two. And I, I don't know. My ovaries were twitching whenever he was there. <laughs> he does it for me. He does it for me. How do we what feel about, yeah, the babies? We don't even talk about the next generation Hathaway family. How are you guys feeling about the kids? Like, even little Rai. He was cute. Oh, I love Rai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love him. <laughs> He's so cute. He's so cute. But like Lisa, right? Lisa, knock knock. Where the hell is second generation at? I think this is a perfect time for her to mesh the wallflowers and the Hathaways. Wait, is that even possible? How old would be the ha- uh, the wallflower kids compared to the Hathaway kids? A few years older, only a few. Because remember, I think in book, was it book two or book one, Lil- Lillian had her. Lillian was there with her, ch- yeah, with Merritt. You're right. Yeah. And Merritt was like a one or two years old. So they're not that far apart. Why? In my brain, it's like 10 years later. Yeah, no, know? but let's also not forget Westcliff was 35 or 36 and Lillian was like 23, 24. So. It's not that. It's not bad if it happens. Oh, let's close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting the flutters just thinking about him. I know. Um. Yeah. I mean, Lisa. Hello. This is like my fucking seventh, uh, strongly worded letter to you <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Where is the series? Please. I would love to, because I feel like we know a lot about, like, what happens with the Wallflower yeah. kids, you know? Like, we know their names, we know how many they've had, we fucking know that Sebastian's going to be having kids till he's 98. <laughs> like, we know all these things, but, like, the Hathaways is like, this is it. I don't know if you're aware, S, but, like, this is your goodbye to the Hathaways. Like, they're gone after this. We don't know what happens to them. Well, why did you tell me? I just realized that that's... <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize. Did you not was... realize this was the end? <laughs> no. It didn't feel like the end, to be honest. Yeah, they're not in the other ones. At all? I... At, At all. all. Not even like a little no. mention of them? No? I don't think so. So, Lisa Claypass, this is my appeal to you. Yeah. To write yeah. a merged series, like a joint series between these two families i'm even willing to i mean it doesn't have to be merged listen i'm even willing for two separate <laughs> just so i get more books yeah that too i mean if you want to give the hat if your plan is to give the hathaways you know their own series their own limelight i'm okay with that you know stay silent if that's the case i just had the the best head canon. what so remember that thing that Cam and Daisy had way back in the day? Yeah. Oh. What if we had Rye and one of Daisy's girls do a redo, do do do, but they actually merge the family for reals for reals? Ah! Well, that yeah. would be great. Yeah. Some Twilight Jacob Renesme action, yeah. What? No, why? I mean in the sense where like the child, like the the couples didn't work out. I don't know why for some reason the children are in love because the fucking sperm and the ovaries from like twenty years ago <laughs> were into each other. What? <laughs> I don't think that, like that makes that any sense. sense. Like that. And it made sense in my head until I said it. <laughs> no, no. Anyways, no. yes, I'm down for uh, what you said, not for what I said. Glad that settled, Lisa Claypass. Um, thank you. Love that we've settled uh, Fox Hall and Isabel for you. Yes. We've also settled Rye and whoever of Daisy's kids, you know, fits best. Uh, you know, just give us a call. Honestly, Lisa, the line is open for you. Feel free to drop us an email. We'll let you know, like, what the pairings are here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. I'm always available. Um, anywho, um, can we, something we didn't talk about was Christopher's little, uh, protective fat self Mm -hmm. when he's like, so essentially he's like, okay, so if we get married, like, you're gonna have to be the obedient wife. Like, I'm, (laughs) I listen, I know how it works in the Hathaway household. 
Ramsey household. But uh, you got to understand that, like, I'm a traditional man <laughs> with traditional values. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you never put yourself in danger. You hear me? That's a rule. And then what does Beatrix do? Put yourself in danger. <laughs> yes. She hops onto a horse who's she's you know she's trying to tame the horse it's i guess something happened to the horse and it's a little wild but a little like you know doesn't really love human company yeah much and she's on its back and it rears back and she falls and uh i don't know why i'm i'm bringing this up other than i just love to see that side of him can i um add to that 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, a million points. It. Yes, agreed. I just want to say that Christopher gives me real daddy vibes or like real dominant mm. and she's really, sub- she's trying to be submissive, you know? Um, There's a scene. I mean, she's doing a pretty good job though. She's like happily doing it. No, you know? okay, okay, hold on. I have this passage that I need to read to you. And it just, like, it gave me these vibes where I was like squealing, you know, in my chair. Uh-huh. In your chair? <laughs> As I was reading. That doesn't sound very comfortable. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Anyways, continuing on. Yes, okay, Christopher quote. says, I'll take care of you. Christopher looked down at her, his expression stern. Are you going to argue with me? Beatrix tried to sound meek. No, sir. And then a slow smile crossed his face. That was the worst attempt at obedience I've ever seen. And then she's like, let's practice. Wrapping her arms uh-huh. around his neck. Give me an order and see if I don't follow it. And he's like, kiss me. And obviously she kisses him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 That. All of that. Yes. Yeah. No. Um. Christopher. I mean, what can I say? I mean, honestly, as I feel like you haven't said a whole lot, the whole lot about him. Like, what are thoughts and feelings? You know, we know. Likes, dislikes. We know that like psycho Harry, obsessive Harry was, mm-hmm. you know, your number one. Uh, I think you did enjoy uh, funny yet troubled Leo Christopher. I mean, I like him, but I don't think he's like a top. I don't think he got to that level of like my love for like Harry. Hmm. But does he beat Leo for you? After this book, no, Hmm. because just seeing Leo in this book with with Kat and like her their kid and. Leo has the advantage of a couple books, you know? Yeah. We only just met Christopher. But let's also recall, Christopher was the person you predicted you'd like the most. So do you think that was kind of, that played a factor in you? Like, maybe having Mm -hmm. higher expectations for him and then him not living up to it, maybe? Maybe, yeah. A little bit. But I think it's just, I think what threw me off is just the beginning of the story, which kind of sucks. And I think I should have expected it. I think I should have read. Maybe told yeah, you. Yeah, I think I should have read the um, the the synopsis and then the cover is there with the letters. Like, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't oh, really. That's and true. And yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really catch that until like I was reading. I was like, "What the hell?" And then it just kind of threw me off. But I mean, he's not bad. He's delicious. He's definitely not bad. Yeah, no. You would still say yes if he suddenly uh, has me up against the stall thin air. and like grips yeah. my hair and. Yeah, and I think there was a moment where I could think he was like edging her, right? Or is am I yes! thinking of someone else? Where he tells her not to come and like she, yes. like she gets all worried, like oh my god, I, I, I came. Yeah, uh, yeah, she came and he, she's like, I'm so sorry, and he's like, it's okay. Yeah. But like, yes, he was edging her, right? Christopher. Oh, can we also talk about um my girl Beatrix on her wedding night? Poppy gives her this hot, hot night gown. She puts it on. She literally is like, you know what? I'm going to put it on. Be- oh, Poppy said. See, that's what I mean. She's just, like it. She doesn't care. She doesn't have the, like, she has no inhibitions. You yeah. Know? She's just doing whatever she wants. No shame. I love that. I know. And she puts it on, and Christopher literally saw red and could not deal. Yeah. Sounded hot. She sounded like, you know, a goddess. I also love that, like, it's probably still a fucking potato sack you know like it's probably still very large and like not that you know sexy in hindsight but like to them it was like ooh, ooh." (laughs) (laughs) 
a slightly sheer fabric. No, it was, yeah, it was sheer, and it also at the back was open. Imagine those men today if they saw, like, a bikini, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, my gosh, an outlander. Did you, oh, No, you probably didn't see it when she goes back through the portal and takes pictures of her and her daughter for him for Jamie to see. Have you seen that? And then she was wearing a bikini no. in one of the pictures, and Jamie was freaking out. He was like, what? Oh, my God. Yeah, I loved it. In his little Scottish accent. And his little spectacles because they're on the tip of his nose because he's in his 60s now and he couldn't see as well. And I'm like, oh, Jamie. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, can we talk about Bennett for a moment? Um, so we kind of talked about the whole, you know, PTSD yes. thing is a huge part of this novel, obviously. Um, and I do like that by the end there's no real like solution to it you know it's it's a thing that's gonna stay for a while and the only cure really is to be kind to yourself and allow yourself time to work through it yeah. and you know and be patient except that sometimes you're gonna have you know moments where you go down a, you know, dark path and then you'll come out of it yeah. because you have, you know, the love of your life helping you out of there and blah, blah, blah. Bennett, the, the whole Bennett story, I find very interesting because I didn't remember this. Oh, you didn't? From, no. Okay. So, well, I mean, yes and no. Like, I, I, when it started happening, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, the guy that he thought died, died yeah. is not actually dead and he'll come back. But I, I, I didn't... I didn't remember, like, how it was going to go down or what would happen from that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Bennett, uh, so so a thing that, you know, causes uh, Christopher a lot of guilt throughout this book is that when he was on the battlefield, there were two, there was something happened and essentially he had to make, like, a decision in this a split moment where he had to pick a man who he really didn't like like he was basically his enemy but you know they were fighting for the same cause yeah. but like he didn't like this man but uh he had to choose between that man and his best friend because his best friend was looking really rough like he was looking like he might not survive so mm -hmm. he had to save the other guy because you know you have to save whoever might survive no and not only that i think christopher was also worried because he was a general that like if they the enemy had got their hands on him, yeah, he has true. a lot of information that you know true. could make true. them win the but war. But he did leave Albert yes. with his friend, so he saved the other guy. And then when he came back, um, the the friend was gone, Albert was still there, and he was wounded. So he just assumed that Bennett had died that day. Turns out Bennett was actually captured. He was. Uh, tortured for years and years until they found him or I guess they released him or something and obviously Bennett is just as troubled by the war and the torture mm -hmm. as uh, you know Christopher is he comes back with you know wanting to uh, avenge himself I guess and take his revenge on uh, Christopher and kill Christopher because in his head you know Christopher left him yeah but turns out you know Christopher explains like no like I I wanted to save you but I thought you were gonna die and I had to save whoever was gonna survive and I left my dog with you like mm -hmm. I you know that I wouldn't have left my dog with you if I hadn't meant to come back like you know how precious and important Albert was to me like I wouldn't just do that and I really love that this is not resolved in like, oh, he's just a madman and he just tries yeah. to kill someone and like, that's that. You know, I really love that like, that's enough for him to understand that there's more to the story. And right away, Bennett is like, I'm just exhausted. You know, like he's so exhausted at this point, physically, emotionally, from years and years and years and years and years of trauma that has not been dealt with because, mind you, they don't fucking know what that mm -hmm. is yet. I love that he wasn't turned into a villain, a villain really. Yeah. You know, he was allowed to change. He was allowed to apologize and, uh, you know, find a new path. Yeah, and he was allowed to have a future for himself. That was so important. And, and I mean, I love that it's hinted at that him and what's her name audrey yes 
might have a little something something going on. I love that it was just like the only reason they started being friends was that he told her he was impotent. I kind of wanted their story. I wish Lisa Claypass wrote a short story. Right? Lisa, I'm going to add this at the bottom of the letter as like a uh, note. Also, really would love <laughs> the story between Audrey and Bennett. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, I was going to say, like, that would have been, like, a good, like, closing out story. Yeah. That could have yeah. been, like, a Christmas story oh. again. Mm-hmm. A missed opportunity here, guys. But anyways, back to Bennett. I love that Beatrix was like, no, you should stay here for a bit, recuperate, you know, gather yourself. And, like, she, again, like, was patient with him and, like, helped him heal. And, like, also Christopher helped his friend heal. And, like you said, I love that he was able to do that. I love that Lisa Clay passed like wrote him with respect you know like he was he was a man suffering and he was given that opportunity to get better or like get as much better as he could which I feel is something in Lisa's in her books that I feel like she often has these like side characters that have quite sad stories Mm -hmm. but she actually doesn't let them stay that Mm -hmm. way at least from the ones that I can remember just off the top of my head like you know I'm thinking like um um Annabelle's mother I'm thinking like obviously Bennett and Audrey and like she has these side characters who usually we would just expect to like kind of fade into the darkness and never hear from again and like you just assume that their life has just stayed as awful as it was sadly yeah But here, I feel like whenever she has characters like that, she actually tries as best as she can to hint at, no, their life doesn't stay, you know, terrible Mm -hmm. and miserable. They actually, you know, have a chance, you know, at something better too. Which I just, you know, because at the end of the day, as much as we would love to think we're the main character, we really are the side (laughs) characters here. (laughs) No, for sure. And I also love that she gave the side characters depth. Like, Audrey's character, I think her character is really interesting, and first she started off as just Christopher's, no, actually no, she started off first as Beatrix's friend, um, and then later on we saw her as a sister-in-law to Christopher, and then we saw her as, like, a sister to her own brothers that are very overprotective, overbearing, and, like, she had a life, and I... I loved her, like, what we saw of her, I think her character was interesting, and I would, again, would have liked to see her more fleshed out, but... She still had a strong presence in the story. And her brother sounded hot, but that's it. You know what? We should actually verify that they do not get a book. Because Lisa has written quite a few little, like, novellas. Christmas novellas and stuff. Right. Part of, like, anthologies and collections and stuff. Like, who's to say that they don't get a book? It's her fault, honestly. Like, she should not create characters that are interesting. Right? It's just, like, I just feel like it's her curse. She just can't write a boring character. Right? Yeah, <laughs> literally. Um, all right. Should we, is there any other, in, you know, instances in the book that you want to discuss, you know, particularly? Or should we move into the monster uh, of the story? I've talked about everything on my list. S, what about you? No, I think we'll go into the monster. Oh, uh, well, actually... How do you feel about the time where, because this is something that kind of bothers you, uh, Seth, sometimes, like, there is quite a bit of time where they are actually separate, mm. you know, she, he's in London with Prudence, and she's back in Hampshire. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It happened over one then? chapter, <laughs> like, I, like, of course, like, they described it like he spent the whole season in London. It's, like, months. Yeah, they it's months. Seen each other. And I feel like for him, he needed that time to, like, acclimate himself to the new world. And, like, not the new world, but, like, a new world to him. Um, And I don't know. I feel like he himself needed to be able to see that Prudence wasn't who, you know, Prudence was. And Beatrix, you know, being Beatrix, just, like, needed to be free in Hampshire. So that's fine with it. But then why do you think he was still going to marry her? Which he says later on, like, oh, no, I wasn't going to marry her. But, like, why did you still propose? Like, you were mad. I get it. And you made stupid decisions because you were mad. But, like, that didn't make sense to me. And then, obviously, the second that he's like, oh, maybe I actually like Beatrix. He's like, proposal? What proposal? I never proposed. Yeah. You know? Okay. 
So how I saw this was, I think he mentioned it, like, briefly. He's like, I'm going to, like, get revenge on the person that wrote the letters. And, like, this was his version of revenge, Mm -hmm. like, marrying or, like, maybe saying he's going to marry someone. Because he thought that was, like, a farce. Like, he thought he was being made, you know. No, but he also thought that, like, it would be a type of revenge, which I wish we saw more of. I wish we saw more of, like, Beatrix witnessing that. And also, McKenna, McKenna level of angst <laughs> yes. here would have been great. Yes. And I also wished, oh my gosh, I wish we got more jealousy with like, you know, Beatrix and Mr. Chickering or whatever his name was. I kind of wish we saw more of Christopher seeing them and like seeing their interactions because we saw it once. But I know it wasn't the focus of the story. The focus of the story was like growth and like healing. But I would have yeah. liked to <laughs> see some petty jealousy. But I just think it's funny that like he's technically engaged and then the second he goes back to i'm sure it's like never mentioned again Poof. <laughs> it wasn't just that like, he was engaged he was just given um you know permission to publicly permission court well her. i mean that's as good as engaged okay? Okay, okay that's as good as married back then okay <laughs> uh let's talk about the monster oh well, actually pause i just want to say that this book obviously ends with Christopher, he's getting uh, a medal for, yeah, yes. you know, his whatever he's done in the war. Like, you know, he's a hero. He obviously does not want this medal. He doesn't feel like he, uh, you know, deserves that kind of yes. honor. Uh, you know, because to him, war is just like he killed people. He's good at killing people. Like, why is that something yes, that, yes. you know, should be an honor? Which I appreciate that he's aware of that um but i just had to mention that i love that albert is giving Mm -hmm. a medal to and he's all cleaned up and like ready to receive this medal and he licks the queen's hand and then yeah i just i loved it his little collar i (laughs) love him so much so cute little albert uh anyway now we can actually move into the monster (laughs) for real for real all right (laughs) so what do you girls think the monster's story was for well, I only have it for um, for Christopher. Yeah. Where I think his monster is like guilt and regret in yeah. regards to like leaving Bennett behind, and he came back from the war and like wasn't able to enjoy yeah. life, and I feel like he carried that on his shoulders. He suffered a lot from survivor's guilt. Like it was, yeah. it was bad. His acceptance that he's not worthy of people's respect or love Mm -hmm. you know like he just fully accepted that as like truth when it's like no everyone deserves to be loved especially by their family like why is that just taken in as like fact here that was like kind of the monster i had for him too but i just labeled it as like the remaining effects of war and like watching and experiencing not experiencing death but just watching it um yeah like it was literally ptsd shell shock uh you know survivor's guilt that you know it was like it was really hindering him from like healing and he wasn't allowing himself to heal because of what he experienced and what he felt like he kind of felt like you said at fault for bennett and a lot of other people died for him like that he was close with so i also had it really interesting i don't even i don't even think i knew this but that if you were, like, uh, someone from, like, nobility, you were able to purchase a commission in the army. I didn't really yeah. know that. So, like, you literally have men leading a squadron that ha- know nothing about fighting or, like, strategy or war. And you're just having people lead them. Like, Christopher literally bought his. And, like, he's leading, like, thank God. Yeah, because he's the second son. That's what's expected of him. If you're a second son, then you go to war. <laughs> but, Come like, on. thank God he was able to, like, actually, like, lead these men. But he f- he was, like, who the fuck am I yeah. to lead these men into war? I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then, you know, it's not mentioned, but he did sell his, uh, what did you call this? His commission. His commission afterwards. So unless the war was over by that point i don't know but like you would imagine that that was probably a difficult decision as well because he's grown to care about his men and the people under him and like obviously he's very good at his job so like to then give that away to someone who's probably just as fucking clueless as he was yeah 
and could be a very bad uh, general, which yeah. he does mention that, like, there are men who are just awful. Like, the guy that he saved, he was awful and was, like, like br- exactly. you know, whipping other soldiers. Yeah. He was awful. But he also, Christopher also said that there's men that knew so much about, like, leading people and, like, actually could lead people and had the strategy, but they didn't have the money to buy the commission. And he's like, who am I, this blue blood, going in that's never really experienced hardship? And, like, because I have privilege, because I have money, I was able to get this post. Yeah, also, I don't quite know how to word this, but the fact that he can't live with himself therefore he's incapable of imagining anyone else living with him if Mm. that makes sense like he's unable to see himself in that light so he like he pushes people away or he's like all right well we'll we'll get married but you will like we will never sleep together yeah. i mean they won't they will certainly fuck but they won't sleep together in the same bed so yeah. you know yeah like yeah like i just feel like it comes from his own um inability to like love himself or like uh s- live live with himself mm-hmm. as he is no i i i yeah i can see that and also i feel like the whole not being able to sleep in the same bed was because he his nightmares are so violent and he didn't know how to cope or deal with it um, and like you said, he didn't know how to care for himself in that way. And so, sadly, yeah, they didn't share their... Even their wedding night, they didn't share the same bed. Um, but I do love that the book ends with him just making that one choice. Yes. You know? it It's literally not more difficult than that. It doesn't mean that the struggle ends there mm-hmm. and that he's never going to wake up and, you know, fucking punch Beatrix in the face. I don't fucking know. But, like... It doesn't mean that it ends there, but it starts with a choice. Exactly. And in that scene, he's making that choice to work mm-hmm. towards that path yeah. to peace. Beatrix can only do so much, you know? She can only, like, tell him that he's worthy, tell him that he can heal, and, like, you know, tell him, you know, the steps for it. But he has to make that choice himself that, you know, he wants yeah. to heal. And it's a simple choice. It's a difficult journey, but it's a simple choice. Yeah. So I do, I do love that we get that little scene. Do you have any monsters for Beatrix? I just had like a small one, um, and it was more so related to Christopher, like the fear of being disliked because you're different. And she seriously feared that he would hate her and like laugh in her face if he found out the truth of who she was because of like obviously past experiences. Um, that's the smallest thing that I had. And, like, because of that, it kind of stopped her from pursuing Christopher romantically. Or even telling him that she is who, you know, wrote the letter. She's the person who did that. I think A. Uh, no, not A. <laughs> I, think, I, <laughs> I think that while it's commendable that she always sees the positive in people that she always she's always willing to love people from the start you know Mm -hmm. she doesn't even know them and she's willing to like them Mm -hmm. that's just how she is you know she doesn't she doesn't her first thoughts are not tainted by prejudices or you know trauma or whatever you know you name it So that's commendable, but I have to say that it's also dangerous, Mm -hmm. you know? I don't remember what book it was. Probably one of the first ones, probably the first one, where someone mentions that it's like, no matter how much you insult or hurt Beatrix, she she will always come back to you. Yeah. Which is not great, you know? And they do mention in this book that she's, I think it's Christopher who says that she's scared of being abandoned. Yes. Yeah. I think that that's where it stems from. You know, like, she's scared of finding herself completely alone in the world. Therefore, she takes everything and everyone in. You know, she just adds more and more people to her little group. But, you know, at least so far, you know, she, she... She's been lucky with the people that, Mm -hmm. you know, have stumbled into her life. But one would imagine that that's not, you know, always the case for people like that. Because there are people like, you know, Beatrix 
who just want to see the positive right away yeah. and they are not like they don't guard themselves yeah. emotionally in that way and they get hurt do you think that's why she has a lot of animals why she takes in a lot of animals Oh, for well? sure for sure yeah she she wouldn't abandon anything because she wouldn't want to be abandoned herself yeah like even like taking lucky for example the cat with three legs like the cat was gonna die mm-hmm. but then beatrix was like no the cat is like has feelings it is a being it deserves to live and be loved as well and i mean similarly it's all animals that are a little different yes and beatrix herself is a little different mm-hmm. you know yeah her taking them in is probably a way for her to soothe herself into feeling like she's taken in, you know, because, you know, she is, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. kind of reverse psychology <laughs> here. <laughs> no, but I also feel like looking at it like in a different light as well, we can also think about maybe she doesn't let Christopher in right away when she sees him, you know, the first time is because you know she fears the abandonment that will happen like she like it's imminent that it'll happen like it'll happen for sure um so maybe she just uses that comment about her belonging in the stables and also other people's comments to solidify her rightness that they will never be together like I just feel like she uses that as like a like a wall or like a piece of armor in a way what do you think of her assessment that um Christopher is a fox he's foxy So, yeah, (laughs) I mean, she explains she explains in the book why she feels he's a a fox and it has something to do with like uh, they're kind of possessive and then they go on little journeys away from home, but they always come home and and like that, Mm. you know, you might take detours to to come home, but you'll always come home. Yeah, you're so that it matches him. I say it does. All right. S question. How did you feel about your Hathaway first time reading? It was good. I think I went, when I started the series, I didn't think I was going to have like a deep connection to any of the characters like I did with the Wallflowers, Mm -hmm. but I was wrong. Okay. (laughs) Because I ended up loving them, the siblings, the relationships. Do you think in any way it's like on par with the Wallflowers? Do you still feel like they're, like it's not like, it doesn't reach the level of the Wallflowers? It feels kind of wrong to compare. I feel like they're all, they're both great. Yeah, they're both great. I think, yeah. 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 Like, not comparing them, but just, like, if they, because I know how much you love the wallflowers, and I know how much, like, you hold them close to your heart. So I just wanted to know if, like, Mm -hmm. this series also had that same effect on you. I think it did. And I think I'm going to miss them. So that kind of sucks that when you girls said that, like, this is it. (laughs) There's not going to be any more mentions of them. I can't believe you read this book and you were, like, like, Oh, this is the end. Though I will say, I can get it because, uh, what's it called? Scandal in Spring. Definitely, like, at the end, it's wrapped up. Like, it's this is the end, you know? And then you get a Wallflower Christmas anyway. Yeah. And that's also, that feels like the yeah. end, another ending. Here, I can, I can understand where it didn't quite, like, hit you because it's not set up mm-hmm. in that way. You don't get, like, a scene at the end with all the siblings together being all yeah. happy and stuff and it feels like a goodbye mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and let's also not ignore that my man kev was barely in the book he only came in for like the last few chapters yeah. him and 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 win are always kind of absent but yeah. i feel like it suits their characters though they are that couple that are very like private because they always be fucking yeah I mean, they're just very private, okay? Like, they've never really enjoyed the chaotic life at home. They like being amongst themselves and, like, just visit once in a while. So, like, it makes sense to me that they're kind of, like, absent. I am sad to let them go. Me too. I loved being in this world. I loved being the wallflowers at first, and now I love being with the Hathaways. I don't know. How are we going to let them go? Um, all right. It is time. This is the final episode. We've read five books prior to this one. No, four books prior to this one. Five, including this one. The final Hathaway series ranking. And if I remember correctly, but I'm willing to forget we ever said that. (laughs) 
I think we said we would get to the last book and rank no. these characters with I the never Wolfhard agreed. Character. I never agreed to that. Mm-mm. I'm willing to forget we ever said okay. that. I'm willing to forget. Boop. Let's just stick to this. All right. Series. This series. Agreed. Okay, this series. Who wants to start? All right. Um, females first, then. Um, I just want to get it over with. Um, Amelia, Poppy, win in third spot. I was struggling with this one. Um, so I have, like, Beatrix and Catherine, but then as I'm, like, thinking about this, I have Catherine and Beatrix, and then I thought about it again, and then it's, you know, Beatrix and Catherine. So I just feel like for them, they're, like, interchangeable at this point. I love them both for different reasons. I'm just confused who's number one, Beatrix or That's Catherine. That's the thing. I, I don't know. I feel like they keep switching on me, you know? But I, right now what I have on my list prior to our discussion is Beatrix and Catherine. But I feel like after our discussion, it's Catherine and Beatrix. But then I don't know. Okay, for me, I think it's going to be Wynn, Amelia, Poppy, Catherine, Beatrix. Okay. And again, this is your weekly reminder that, like, none of these characters are bad, okay? Like, this is hard for us. Okay, S, come on, girl. Get your shit <sighs> but together. Kinda, it kind of sucks because... um. Okay, so for the girls, I'll say I'll say Amelia, Beatrix, Win, Cat, and Poppy. Wow. What? No. Beatrix? No. Maybe, maybe no. I don't know. I'm not satisfied with this list. I'll just say that. Okay. okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> so and then for the guys, we'll go with Cam, Christopher, Kev, Leo, and then Harry. Okay, for me, I found this really hard. Um, because. I like Christopher and Leo, like, but I feel like they're at the same, remember, remember we said we can't put them on the same ranking, that's the same number, we can't do that. Um, mm. So I have Cam, Christopher, Leo, Harry, then Kev. But I f- honestly feel like Leo and Christopher are tied for me, but again. Wow. Uh, for me, it's Cam, Kev, Harry, Christopher, Leo. Our lists are so different. At least, like, our favorites, you know, we're not fighting over them. I don't know. I'm not satisfied with my list, but I will leave it at that. It will be, like, 1 a.m. She'll be in bed, like, oh, no, I should have said that. <laughs> Still agonizing over I'll this I'll probably list. resend my list in the chat. She'll post yeah. it, you know, with this episode. Be like, no, this is my new list. Uh, speaking of, uh, obviously, we've just made our official uh, final list. Uh, but if you have a list of your own that you would like to share with us, uh, or, you know, feel free to just tell us who are your favorite characters or your favorite col- uh, color. <laughs> <laughs> tell us your favorite color, I guess. <laughs> your favorite couple in the series. Uh, feel free to reach us online. You can find us on Twitter at the RTM Pod, as well as on Instagram at Romancing the Monsters podcast you can also email us lisa that goes for you you can definitely email us at <laughs> romancing the monsters podcast at gmail.com i hope you got that <laughs> repeat it once more for her romancing the monsters podcast at gmail.com that is at gmail.com thank you <laughs> um we're also on tiktok at romancing the monsters pod um, and lastly, uh, we are also on YouTube where the captions are not great, but they're there. Um, so you can find us by simply searching for the name of our podcast. And while you're there, why wouldn't you follow us? <laughs> Just the thought. Um, and if you're looking for me specifically, I'm on both Twitter and Instagram at foes and lovers. And you can find me as on both Twitter and Instagram at but this book. And you can find me, Seth, on both Instagram and Twitter at Pros with Woes. And also, please feel free to leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, as well as subscribe to any of the podcast platforms. Yeah, just do it if, if you want. I mean, it'd be great. But, if we've earned it. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I don't know what our next series will be. I don't know either. I'm we've actually... We've got to discuss that. I don't know what it will be we do know but we refuse to go that <laughs> route Ugh. as really wants to do the ravenel series <laughs> at least the clay pad but i don't think it's gonna happen like now yeah it's gonna happen like a year a year people listeners let us know if it's something that you are interested in 
No, listen. The next series we do is something else. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I I'm, I feel like I have more to say, but I don't. I definitely don't. So. All right. See you next week, guys. Let's just end it. Hopefully. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>